As the Michael Jordan of reporting, Ernie Johnson calls it, Steffertless. Look at that run, March 29th, April 19th. Career high, 11 straight 30 plus point games, four games of 10 or more threes, 78 total. In this month of April, he's made 85, which is the most for any NBA player in any month, and he still has two more games to go. Listen to this. In his last 11 games, he's shooting 49% from three. This season, he has six games with 10 or more threes, more than the rest of the league's players combined. And on contested threes, he's shooting 42%, which is better than 93% of the league. This entire segment is just to marvel about Steph Curry. You tried to guard this man. <laughs> I cannot imagine. Why are you coming to me like that, Adam? Because Shaq wasn't going out there and <laughs> hedging on Steph. <laughs> so I just want to know, it couldn't have been fun. It had to be awful. No, no. Um, fear. You have a little fear. And not from, like, you're scared of a guy, but just not knowing what he's, what he's going to do. When a guy is coming up, and obviously he has an amazing handle, but when a guy can shoot from anywhere on the floor, when he shoots from going left and he shoots from going right, and then when you get the ball up, he's even more deadly with his cuts, with his screening, with his ability to come off screens. Mm. I, I mean, he's just impossible to guard. So I, when I watch this guy, I watch him shoot shots, Candace, that I'm like, no, no, that's not, that's not a good shot. And it's like, but for Steph, that is a perfect shot. And so what I love about Steph is obviously all the highlights we see from him coming down shooting, you know, shooting these 50 footers. But what I love about him is his ability to get the ball up the ability to play off the ball, his ability to pass the ball with both hands, and also his ability to go in there and, like we talked about, he's a great finisher. People don't give him credit because we see the half-court shots that he make, but he's a great finisher with both hands. He take contact well, so, I mean, this guy is, this guy's phenomenal. I've played against the best, beat the best. I've only seen something like this one time for two years. A fellow by the name of Mahmoud abdul Rauf. The speed, the prettiness, the efficiency, how the ball went in. Hadn't seen it. And Steph is my favorite player because, again, this is something I've never seen before. And when he first came in, I hated on him. Did you really? I'm, I'm the guy that's sitting on the couch, and when he goes to the corner and he throws it up, no way that goes in. And it goes in. And then, you know, I wait. He ain't going to make this one either. Guy. And then finally, he earned my respect, and he's my favorite player. I wish I could shoot like that because it looks pretty. I'm glad he's playing it in this era, because if he played in our era, D-Wade, I would have had to touch him up. And, <laughs> and it would have hurt my heart having to touch him up, because I just like watching him play. Like, he's must-see TV. Like, if I was a guy that didn't play basketball and had kids who wanted to play basketball, when the Golden State Warriors come to town, I'm going That's to watch That's what we're going that. to say. I'm going to watch that. And then, you know, the title of the best shooter ever to play, don't ask. It's him, by far, by leaps and bounds. I remember watching in 2014, when they lost to San Antonio yeah. in the playoffs, mm -hmm. and watching this kid put up 50. And I had watched him at Davidson, of course, and watched a little bit of Golden State a little bit. My brother would be out there trying to guard Steph a little bit. Um, but that was kind of when he did that in the playoffs. That was when I was like, oh, like this is, this is going to change how people perceive basketball mm. and now you pull up to parks and you see these kids out there shooting 50 footers Can't and i just want to pull over Little and tell them too. there's only one steph curry <laughs> and that's why i feel like people think they can be like him but they can't there's one of him he's one of one mm. and i think in that way it's fun to watch him but if i have a child and they think that they're able to do the things that he does that's crazy you, you can't. You can't teach that. <laughs> so if Layla, you saw Layla out there. I would knock Steph. her out. Like, my nephew, I'm like, you are not Steph Curry. Like You've given this speech before. A million times. Oh, you, you know, not, listen, when, ruined, when the hand go like that, that's the game. serious. He's given this talk. speech before. Man, when kids go out there and think that he doesn't, over time, replicate that jump shot where he finishes his shot, now kids are out there doing all this, like Steph. And that takes years and years yeah. of... You know, perfecting your game. So I think so he you is say, one of one. So would you say Ice Trey is Steph Curry like for the Hawks? Yes. Yeah. I think he is thing. Steph Curry like, yeah. but yeah. Steph is still one of one. What, my, my favorite thing about this season for Steph is, and I played a similar role, right? Great player in the organization. G another great player come down that kind of overshadows your greatness. And Steph took a back seat, similar to what I did. 
And we kind of forgot about Steph Curry when, when Kevin Durant was there. And he goes through the injury last year. And now he's like, hello. Yeah. Two-time MVP is back. And he's back with, you know, a level that we have never seen out of a two-time MVP. This is, he may not get MVP this year, but this is definitely, for him, it's probably going to be one of, the, one of his favorite seasons of his entire career when it's all said and done. I was reading that when everybody was in the bubble, he was working out the same time they were playing because they weren't there and put on five pounds of muscle to, to get up to their speed. There is a race right now for scoring leader. So last night, Bradley Beal dropped 45 points to overtake Steph Curry by point one. We are going to have a race to the finish for scoring leader. Now, Steph Curry has already won two. His last one was back there. He, he has won one. He's looking for two. 2015 was the last time he won. If he were to win, he would uh, become the oldest scoring champion since Michael Jordan, who did it in 97. MJ did it 10 times. Wilt, seven. KD, four. Shaq, two. So he would join a list of 19 that had two. And I know you would have had three if David Robinson didn't drop 74. If the Clippers would have played some defense. Yeah. I mean, if the Clippers didn't point shave. That, that's okay. So, yeah. He's not mad. No, I'm not mad at all. I like Bradley Beal. And see, I, I'm, I'm not really qualified to answer this because all my points are in the sky, but I'm, I'm one, D Wade, Candace, maybe you can answer. I'm wondering, as a shooter, can you say I'm going out and get 50? Because I know when I used to tell you to get 50, you used to go out, same thing with Kobe and LeBron. So as a shooter, if you say in your mind, I'm going to get 50 tonight, can you do it or does it just have to happen? Well, Beal shot 37 shots last night. I mean, the career high for Curry is only 33. So he seemingly was shooting his way to that, but his question to you. I'm not a shooter, so mm. I can't act. But as a scorer... I might be the best shooter. You, when you're in this kind of rhythm like this that these guys are in, 50 is not Chill, that far go. away. You're averaging 30 a night, 50 is like, okay, let's get a little hot tonight. A couple mm. 